So Phil, nice seeing you again. The floor is all yours for Skiros. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, my enthusiasm and passion for Skiros uh, hopefully will come through all of this. I've had many, many trips trips there. Um, let me introduce myself uh, first as well from my perspective. Um, I am Phil Knott and I have many, many jobs and many roles over the, the years, uh, principally ecotourism and nature conservation. Uh, and I was uh, instrumental in, in setting up the, the ecotourism holiday to Skiros. My first trip was in 2011. I was invited as part of the Life Plus project and instantly, instantly fell in love with the island. Uh, everything about the island. Um, and for me as, as a, a naturalist, as a bird watcher, I thought it had so, so much potential. It was the, it was the whole Greek experience with fantastic birds uh, and all the habitats in one, in one small area. So having done a survey work uh, there for three weeks in 2011, I took it back to the UK. And as I started my, my tour company uh, work, I was then able to uh, develop the program and we first hosted that in 2013. From, uh, from an ornithological perspective, from a migration point of view, the location of Skiros is just absolutely uh, bang on for the broad migration across the Mediterranean Sea. And so we time our visit for ecotourism at the peak migration in spring. So not only is the island at its most beautiful and green after the winter rains, uh, all the flowers are in, in bloom, but the birds stop off to refuel, having traveled across the Sahara, having traveled across the Mediterranean Sea. And so you get birds showing beautifully in a beautiful breeding plumage in wonderful habitats uh, and nice, pleasant climate and temperatures as well. But the location in the middle of the sea there, that is crucial. And particularly with the, the topography of the island, it really does funnel in the birds. Uh, it's a very, very highly visible site. With the topography of the south uh, really being attractive and for, for birds that are flying over in the day or in the night, it, uh, it really does channel the direction in. So from a bird watching perspective, from a British bird watching perspective, it is phenomenal. Uh, the habitats uh, are incredible, unique to, to Greece, I would say really in terms of what you see and what you experience from sea level up to the heights here. This kind of habitat we do not see, uh, certainly without uh, any kind of disturbance at all or, or human development. Uh, and the birds uh, respond uh, to that as well. Um, so good quality habitat, and it really does tap into a lot of the kind of the rarer birds that we expect to, to see here. And the, the Kretschmar's bunting, for example, that's one of the key species we, we would travel to see. Uh, it might not seem so much, but it's a very, very rare bird, very restricted range. And for, for European bird watchers, not just British bird watchers, it is a top species to see uh, very much at the, the western point of its range uh, there. So that's one of our, our, our key targets. And the south of the island is, is pretty much the only habitat uh, where we would find this. And uh, so it's absolutely vital that this is maintained. This is a view in the south as well. Um, all these little scrubby patches uh, as they come mixed in with the lovely rocky habitats that we've seen on Natura site, absolutely tremendous uh, nature value and the groves and the, and the wooded valleys going down through the top. Um, absolutely picture perfect. And for this, for, for British and for, and for European tourists as well, it's absolutely top draw um, because you get to do wonderful bird watching in the best scenery, in the best habitats. And it draws, it really does draw. It brings in lots and lots of tourists. I'm very proud of having uh, developed the tour. Since 2013, we were running uh, sometimes two, two trips per year, but usually just uh, one trip, a double group here, as you can see. And um, it's not just photography, it's actually just observing uh, the birds as well. We'll cover all of the habitats. Uh, and the south of the island is absolutely crucial to that, uh, covering, as you can see, almost every picture. It's, uh, it's instrumental uh, in, in the views uh, and the makeup of the island. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's the migratory birds are of prime interest to us. Yes, we've got the nesting birds of Skiros, but it's the migratory birds that funnel through in large numbers, uh, particularly in the spring that, that draw us as, as eco-tourists. And these are many birds that, that uh, are just passing through. We'll be going through to Scandinavia, to Russia, to, to the British Isles, through to Germany. Um, and here they, they drop in small numbers in good weather, 
and in uh, often in rain or in storms or in wind, they drop in huge numbers. We would call that a, a fall of migrants. And some of my best bird watching experiences, and I've been all over the world with nature tourism, some of my best bird watching experiences have been on Skiros, often after a thunderstorm. Uh, and you go out, uh, the puddles uh, are on the road, um, but the weather has just about cleared and there are birds everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Birds that you often don't see in uh, at all, all of a sudden you have maybe 100 or so. The bird in the bottom left there, a wind chat. Uh, there are days where I've seen 200 wind chat uh, on skiers, right across the island, right across the, the rocky slopes, right down into the, the farmland as well. And this funneling effect uh, draws in migratory uh, raptors, birds of prey. This is a key, key aspect in terms of uh, wind turbines as well. Uh, the south of the island, always, always, always picking up uh, birds of prey. This is a marsh harry. We would always see marsh harry every day in spring. They were moving through every day on a broad front. Uh, lots of hen harriers, um, pallet harriers, Montague's harriers, Levant sparrowhawks, short-toed eagles, um, a real range of, of, of things. Always just moving through, sometimes stopping for a day or two, uh, but moving through. And again, we can get uh, 10, 20 harriers easily in a morning coming through, and that's going right across the south of the island, traveling through the fertile valleys and then continuing north. But they've been attracted in by the, the big hill to the south. Even the griffin vulture, I think we were the first to record this um, Croatian bird in 2013 or 2014. I know it hung around for, for a little while. Uh, and I've, I saw it on the south of the island many, many times, uh, along with, of course, the Bonelli's eagle, a uh, very rare uh, raptor from across Europe. And the, the peregrine falcons, the Eleonora's falcons, uh, a huge draw for us, and I'll come on to that with the, the boat trip, even down to the, the Little Owls, uh, of course, and the south of the island is absolutely uh, full of those. This is not an easy bird to see uh, for us in, in, in the British Isles and other places, and there are days where we have maybe 10 or 15 sightings of these birds. Once you know where to look, uh, they are everywhere, um, but the habitats uh, where they're hunting on the small lizards uh, is, is vital. And then the south of the island as well, and in some cases in the north, the, the chucker, partridge, again, a very restricted range of, of birds and very popular for, for us as nature tourists to see. And then stunning birds, one of the few kind of birds that, that stay throughout the year. So these arrive in, in April, the, the black-eared wheat ears. What a beautiful bird. Uh, and they, they uh, set up to breed. As well as the, the raptors are moving through, uh, lots and lots and lots of, of passerines. So the small, the swallows, the red rump swallows, the sand martin, all of these uh, birds in their thousands uh, coming through, often on a broad front again. So not necessarily coming run through one channel, right across the island uh, in, in large numbers, using the thermals, collecting the insects, uh, stopping for maybe a few hours and then moving on. Uh, and so um, any, anything that would interfere with that uh, or their flight path is, is obviously detrimental. Uh, and the bee eaters, not popular with the, the bee, the beekeepers I know, were very popular with us as a, uh, one of the most beautiful birds uh, and again folk will travel across Europe to see this bird and we we do we, we travel to Greece uh, to see this bird uh, amongst many others. We would see maybe 100 species of bird on Skiros in, in a week that's that's a lot for a small island where we do very little travel um, we would see 100 species. If we stay for longer with more migratory species come earlier come later we could probably get 120 130 species coming through. I suppose maybe 40 or 50 species would, would breed. I'm not sure on, on the latest list for Skiros. So it's the migratory birds as well as the, the rare nesting habitats has, uh, has to be emphasized. Um, past, past rhymes like the lesser gray shrike, again, top, top birds to see just on, on migration through. And it brings the groups uh, and the feedback we have from, from this holiday uh, is, is top every single time. It's the whole package of experience and ecotourism has to be uh, rooted in, in the local population, it has to be uh, investing, it has to be a genuine product. And we're very proud that we, we produce a genuine product that people love. The food is, is fantastic, the accommodation is fantastic, the hospitality is out of this world uh, and the tourist experience that we provide uh, really does uh, give people what they want. It's not just going somewhere and seeing birds and flying across the world. It's not necessarily the most sustainable thing, but investing, uh, let's make sure we spend as much local money as we can, putting uh, efforts into seeing local crafts and culture, uh, a key part of it. Uh, what is a quiet time of year for the, the tourist season? And 
so many uh, wonderful, wonderful memories, uh, and, and I cannot wait to get back uh, to Skiros. Um, just group after group of group. I, I don't have a tally of how many people we've brought through, um, but uh, it is it is significant now. We might be looking at maybe 100 uh, British tourists that have come through Skiros. The highlight we'd often say um, over the course of the week is uh, the trip round the south of the island uh, on the boat. It's of course to see the wonderful scenery, uh, which is uh, completely undisturbed by any kind of development whatsoever. So it's, it's one of the most special boat trips I've, I've done in anywhere in the world. And I, I've managed to, to do boat trips on every continent. This one for me is, is one of the most beautiful, one of the most relaxing. And of course we see the Eleonora's falcons as we go around um, we see the sheer waters. Um, but the fact that there's no, no development, no disturbance, and we've got an excellent chance of, of picking up uh, sea life, but also the bird life on the cliffs as we go around. Uh, it is an absolute treasure. Um, and I think it should be respected as such. And the, the tour company, Heather Lee, that, that uh, I work for, we continue to invest into Skiros. Obviously, COVID and the pandemic has not been kind on, on international travel. Uh, here's our website we've just uh, listed. You'll see um, not only that we're listing dates, we're also listing dates for 2026, uh, as well as next year as well. We continue to uh, invest in this. This is a popular tour for us, and we will want to uh, continue to visit Skiros as it is. If there's significant developments and changes on the island, then obviously we have to, to, have to look at uh, how, we, how we plan. Uh, the south of the island, is, is an absolute vital part of our itinerary. It's, it's half of our itinerary is looking uh, and spending time down in, down in there. And if it's taken over as a development site, there, it, it'll be hard to see because of the scale of the island and the size of the island, it, it, it will undoubtedly change it for the worse. And we're only just tapping into the start of this. The potential for Skiros across the year, not just in spring migration is, is high and we could easily do more. And other tour companies could do more you could look into other aspects of things, not just nature tour, bird tourism. Uh, as well, of course, there's the wonderful endemic flowers, which we don't really cover on our, our, our holiday. We, we have a look at some of that, but the reptiles as well. Um, amphibians, a whole kind of whole package of nature, which we look at, it means you could be developing uh, tours throughout the year. Um, yes, that's our credits to the photographs there. So uh, I hope that's a useful presentation and uh, yeah. That's amazing, Phil. And I hope that everybody can understand how so many people around the globe are coming to Skiros to enjoy Skirian nature, which is quite unique to say it's a phenomenon. So, I mean, for anybody in Greece, that would be something that they would, wouldn't hurt at all. So, um, what would be your last word, let's say, or to all the people here, because this is a press conference, so to, all, to everybody who is just uh, listening to us, what would you say about the not turning Skiros into a wheat turbine place? I, I have been lucky to travel across Greece or the whole Mediterranean and travel across Europe, travel across the world looking at things. And Skiros for me stands out as somewhere that is unspoilt. And that is a rare thing this, these days. So yes, you've got the nature that comes with it, uh, but it's it's the if it, even if it wasn't a nature site, one of the most important designations. The recognition uh, across this is is international. Um, but all that aside, and the wonderful birds I've just shown you and, and the potential, it is an unspoilt um, wonder, and I think that should be absolutely respected in its own right. Then you start throwing the nature and the birds on top of that, and it's just no, no. This is crazy. Surely this is crazy. Greece should maintain these, the things that other countries have lost long ago. So we should have take this into account and have it in mind. And Absolutely. there are other choices. I, 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 you can say, uh, as, a, as someone from the British Isles, I, I'm a hypocrite to say we, we, have, we have ruined parts of our, our exactly. land. I live on an island which is overrun by tourism. Uh, I live on Skye in, in, in Scotland. And we have many issues with overdevelopment. We have wind turbines in various places, and it really, really uh, negative impacts on on the nature and and the place. And we're we're fighting hard for that. And then to go somewhere in the world and find it perfect, uh, oh, you, you must maintain that. You must maintain that. 
So let's see. Let's uh, say that we hope to make it uh, to meet again in Skiros, and then when you will come back next year or maybe the summer, <laughs> if you're lucky enough, you will find it the same way that you always like it and you love Skiros very much. We all know this. So thank you very very much. And I guess you can say hello to all your friends. There will be some of your friends who will be listening to you. And I, 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 I long for the day where we, we can all meet again on Skiros uh, and share some wonderful food uh, and go out bird watching. I'll take you out bird watching. Of course. I'd love that. Food, I would nice enjoy. food, good bird watching. Absolutely. The and best. Skiri and nature, the best. Thank you very, very much, Phil. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very it's a much pleasure, for, a real pleasure for to supporting, be for supporting the, Skiri, the Skiros community and the Skiri and nature. And uh, look forward to seeing you soon. See you soon, Ruth. Thank you. Thank you very much.